before we get to your strategy in Asia, let's talk about what's happened in Charlottesville. I know that one of the co-founders came out with a statement today talking about the reaction or the move that Airbnb had to take uh, following what happened in Charlottesville. What's your take on it? The hatred this past weekend has been shocking. Uh, Airbnb's mission uh, has uh, been to bring people together, fostering inclusion, understanding. And so when we became aware that there was going to be a gathering at Airbnb properties this past weekend in Charlottesville uh, by white supremacists, we took action to actually cancel those reservations and ban uh, uh, those users from the platform. Uh, we felt that that was completely incompatible uh, with our values, and so we took a strong stance. Any measures you can put in place? to prevent such, uh, I guess, customers, clients, uh, from occupying Airbnb uh, Well, more properties. broadly, we've tried to take a very strong stance against discrimination and hatred. We actually make every one of our users sign a pledge when they sign up uh, that they will not discriminate, they will not exhibit hatred. Um, and so whenever we become aware of such an example, they're permanently banned from the platform. Now, talking about your strategy in Asia, you're trying to get into Asia in a big way, but it's a tough, tough market. Like I said earlier, a battlefield for a lot of companies. We've seen the likes of Amazon fighting with uh, Lazada and Alibaba. What's your strategy in Asia? How important is Asia to Airbnb? Well, intra-Asia travel is a big deal. Uh, so we've been promoting Airbnb in a number of countries. Uh, in Singapore and Australia, uh, we're very ubiquitous. We're probably most well-known in those countries by the populations. Uh, we've been investing a lot into China, though, lately. Um, Chinese travelers are going um, all around the world. Uh, it's the fastest growing segment. Um, they're the number one spenders on international travel. We're running a big campaign there right now. And so a lot of our growth in Singapore and elsewhere is happening uh, as a result of Chinese travelers using Airbnb to explore the world. For China in particular, you have Airbnb wannabes, the like of Tujia, which uh, tied up with Expedia. And today it has about 450,000 listings and growing. What's the strategy? I mean, you become, you'd be competing with more players than Tujia alone. So there is local competition in China. Uh, they're largely focused on domestic travel. Our focus historically has, has played to our strength, which is international travel. So we've been marketing Airbnb as a way for Chinese to explore the world. We have now 4 million homes in 191 countries. None of the local competitors in China um, have that. And so we've made sure that we've played to our, our, our strength and not engaged in any kind of direct competition. Are you adopting a different strategy compared to in Asia compared to the US and Europe? because it does seem like Airbnb is pretty low-key in this part of the world. You're pretty aggressive in your marketing strategy elsewhere. Yeah, well, um, in every part of the world, we're trying to partner with government. Uh, this is a new model, uh, and you know, new policies have to be passed to, I think, realize the full potential of, of home sharing. And so you know, we do that government by government. Uh, most recently, we've seen a big success in Japan, uh, where Japan has passed a new national law, basically saying home sharing up to 180 days uh, is now legal. Uh, and it's, it's a huge opportunity. Japan has been our number one destination uh, in Asia now for a number of years. But even for Japan, I mean, it's a matter of implementation, and that is still a work in progress. If you take a look at Singapore, it also currently uh, recently passed a law stating that it is illegal to rent a place for less than six months. I mean, what's your take on the regulations across the board in all of Asia, the differing regulations? Yeah, well, it's, it's obviously Does it not... Does it a more competitive or difficult marketplace for you? It's, it's obviously not a simple topic, and I think what we've seen is, uh, you know, this will play out over time. Uh, we try to be um, as proactive um, and, uh, and be a partner to government as, as much as possible. Um, but figuring out exactly the right model and all the implementation details will take time. It's not a one-and-done type of situation. Uh, it, I'm sure things will continue to evolve, even here in Singapore. Give us a sense of how important the Asian market will be in the future. You turned profitable uh, last year. How do you see Asia contributing to your profitability going forward? Oh, it's huge. Uh, you know, Asia has been the fastest growing region uh, for us. But from if a you look at base. From a low base, um, although quickly catching up. I mean, this has now been a story for probably three years. It's been our, our top growing uh, origin region. Um, and if you look at all the industry numbers, it is the biggest opportunity on the planet, China specifically. But if you also look at Southeast Asia as a destination, uh, all the numbers are incredibly, uh, incredibly promising. And, and the reason for that is you have um, the highest um, uh, penet um, 
percentage of millennials, of young people in Asia than any other part of the world. So you have a whole new generation, and this generation travels differently. They're tech savvy, uh, they know uh, a fair amount of English, uh, and they're looking to experience the world. They actually have money to spend. They are part of the middle class, and they want to go out uh, and experience things. And, and Airbnb is definitely riding that trend. And so it's a huge part of our future growth story. Your biggest competitor still remains the hotels, which are after especially the business sector. How are you playing, how are you taking that into consideration in your strategy? Well, I think it's, we each have very different value propositions. And I think, you know, hotels definitely uh, have a unique value proposition that's going to be relevant uh, indefinitely. Uh, are you after a business traveler? Yes, we are also going after business travelers. For business travelers, our value proposition is if you are on a long-term assignment, one week, two weeks, you might prefer the comforts of a home, the amenities of a home, being able to cook. Um, you might have a significant other with you uh, who wants to have a, a little bit more of a settled feeling. Uh, and so, you know, it's that segment of the business travel market that we've seen a lot of traction with, and, and that's a, a very fast-growing segment for us. It's grown 6x since we launched it in 2016. You are Chief Technology Officer, now Chief Strategy Officer. What's the vision five, ten years down the road? What's the strategy going forward? Uh, well, the biggest uh, kind of evolution of the strategy is to become a platform for the entire trip. So no longer just about accommodation, but really trying to reinvent every aspect of travel. So our first step has been to uh, focus on experiences. And instead of offering kind of um, you know, large scale, um, very touristic uh, tour operators, uh, we are um, coming up with something where individuals can now share whatever it is they're passionate about anywhere in the world. And, and as a traveler, you can find and discover these things. You know, it's a great way to travel more authentically. That's what our brand is about. And so as we enter other aspects of travel, we'll be doing that. All right.